Hello and welcome back. Today on the not on the bench again is a Tektronix 7704A mainframe oscilloscope. This has one unusual plug-in which is a 7B53A and it's a time base uh, but no vertical plug-ins. However I managed to procure some hopefully working uh, vertical plugins, inputs, you know, and another time base maybe. No idea if it works, I would think it does. Uh, right, don't know a great deal about these, in fact I know bugger all about them. I would think this here on the top is our, uh, what's that, driving the horizontal is it? Where are we, yeah, driving the horizontal maybe, horizontal driver I would think that is. I can't see any blown or damaged parts, but one thing I do know to look out for on these old telescopes is these bloody tantalums, of which there aren't too many, this isn't too bad this one, there's about four on this board, there's another little one down there which looks a bit black but I need to get a magnifying glass on that, got the usual daft bloody transistor uh, bases, whatever you call them, connected or sockets. I had to look at my drawer then. Right, so yeah, I have checked them out already just with a meter on continuity buzzer. Right, and what I found was that's indicating a short circuit. Short, short, there's another one isn't there, that one no, another one down here isn't there, we'll find out where it goes. Now of course, that just, that could just be, uh, another resistor a part of the circuit or something like that. I've uh, tried the DC resistance, one is measuring 100, the other one is measuring 70 ohms. So the thing to do really is to just unsolder it and then check it. Alright, I've lifted one leg of that tantalum, tested it and it tests good. So the resistance must be coming from you know that low resistance reading must be coming from somewhere else. Well I've gone over this side of uh, all the circuit boards with a fine tooth comb. Well tell a lie I couldn't find my tooth comb so I had to use a magnifying glass and I can't see anything that jumps out. I've reseated all the, well I just pressed all the integrated circuits sort of tried all the uh, transistors to make sure they're seated all properly in their sockets and onto the next side and then we'll have a uh, bit of a power up and that is if we've got the correct lead we'll have a look. While we're at the arse end of the beast we'll uh, check what you should always check on every bit of gear that you get that you've uh, never powered up before. Check the fuses. Uh, as you can see this scope was made in Guernsey, in your old Channel Islands. It's a bit bloody warmer there than what it is here. Well, I thought this was supposed to come out at the moment. Right, so we're missing one of those things. Doesn't seem to matter. There we go. Right. I can't see anything particularly wrong. So let's power it up, shall we? Magnifying. Why have we only got one sort of time base? Let's turn that intensity down, that is. And the focus. No astigmatism. Got graphical illumination. Read out, looks a bit blurry. Basic. 
coupling god i'm used to those uh big scopes there then they got big controls i can't see bugger on here normal single normal okay auto ac internal source right okay that's a bit better isn't it we haven't got that really bright spot. Anyway, everything's cushy. Right. On this uh, 7704 mainframe take oscilloscope today, it's got two problems as far as I can see. It's got no um, display. Uh, they're supposed to display, um, I think, voltages and things of that nature. They're all blurred. And the other thing it's not doing, which it should, it's not adjusting the intensity. The intensity, as far as I can see, works off plus 15 volts. Um, basically goes straight to a knob. I'm not quite sure what it does after that, because the, um, where do you call it, the manual is a bit, well, it's a scan, you know what I mean? It's a bit difficult to try and navigate. Anyway, there's this ribbon here, and in the manual it says, you take a load of voltages off there so I took all the voltages off there what was missing was the plus 15 volt supply which makes sense so we basically got there's a couple of dual transistors in some of these packages or so I suspect some of these are I don't know what they are to be honest this bloody scope is not the easiest to work on it really isn't Compared to the Tech 500 scopes, it's yeah, I was quite fed up with it this morning. I checked the lightly sort of subjects, which is this big tantrum here, and that's okay. One thing I have found so far is that these this diode. I hope you can see that it's not very good light in here. This diode and this diode here are showing as being short circuit. The other thing is we've got like a plus 17 volt supply coming off the transformer I think and I would think it's a transformer and bridge or I'm not quite sure what power supply this has got in here. Should be plus 17 volts at this end, plus 15 volts regulated at this end. We're only getting plus 16 volts here going in. Maybe that's being pulled down by these transistors or something else being faulty I did think about starting to pull these diodes and testing them and all that malarkey but what I'm going to do I'm going to pull the schematic up on me uh, computer that I've uh, got here if I can get the bloody thing to work I've put the uh, schematic on this little thing here what do you call it, I can't remember what the frigate's called and then I'm going to go through and take voltages follow it through. As far as I can see there's a plus 54 volt supply coming in here somewhere as well. As mentioned this is not the easiest to scope to work on but however we tech have kindly provided this little letter box so that we can fart about and poke our probes through there. Aren't it kind of am I? Jesus there's no room to work on this damn thing at all. Anyway remain calm and let's crack on. I've got my schematic up on my computer and I thought right we'll start with this and you can see down there you see some legs of a uh, series pass transistor thought we'd take voltages on there we've got 17 volts on one pin and then under zero volts on the other pins so I think that wants a look at but first before I stop pulling any components because these are hard to get to and I don't want to damage the board unnecessarily I'm going to go and have a look at this schematic in more detail well, I hope you can see this I have just checked this diode here that is showing short or it's showing short on a diode test both ways but it's reading 40 ohms okay so now I'm thinking, what if all this circuit here is okay and we've got a short somewhere else or a partial short to grand? As far as I can see, right, this is how it works. You've got 15 volt out 
and then it says 15 volts send so I'm presuming there's some sort of circuitry here and we've got a, a signal coming back got some sort of filter here and then this goes to a long tail pair that's all it is minus 50 volts on the tail and it's a Q3235 is a dual transistor package match 20s so you've got to have 15 volts here and I presume 15 volts here for hold on yes We've got our 15 volts here because then this goes up to here to Q3225 and that's basically make sensing that everything's cushy and then that would probably we've got another long tail pair here and if everything's cushy there that's cushy that's cushy you see we've got like a sort of feedback path here and then basically we've just got like a cascade I think is what it's called if that's turned on, that's turned on, that's turned on and what turns this on? it looks like this one here so if everything's cushy here that turns on this transistor which turns on all this lot I presume so what if there's nothing wrong with any of that because I just te tested this diode here and it's okay it's a hell of a job to get in here to try and unsolder that and I was really reluctant to do it and after doing so I'm really not going to try and unsolder anything without the board out so what is it connected to well that goes into this board here which is I think acquisition board and that must be going to everything else. So how the hell do we test where a short is? God knows, because as far as I know, that plus 15 volt goes everywhere. So somehow we've got to trace a short down here. I know it's not the plugins because they weren't there and it was still doing the same thing. So. How do you test the short on a complex piece of kit like this? Test for a short. Probably every board has got a 15 volts on it. Unplug every board. I tried powering this up with that cable unplugged. It didn't like that. I could hear a few horrible noises. And I only did it very briefly. But we didn't get 15 volts here. Where we should have. With this cable plugged out, however, we get a short. With it unplugged, we don't. I put that on ohms. We're getting a direct short to ground. So I think the only way really to do this is to go around the whole board. I'll try and fix a probably to the 15 volts um, rail oh yeah I don't know if we, oh, thinking I'm imagining things and then I'll go through the whole board and see where it where they come out I've tried to look at the manual but it's less than clear at the moment more later I've gone through the whole scope all the bits I can get to anyway pulling off plugs all these plugs that um, you know provide power or whatever pull them all off and at each one I basically with me probe. I've been uh, testing for a continuity shot right now. That's the first time it stopped buzzing, and that is when I pull off this cable here, which goes to our regulator board, and then it plugs into. Oh, where does it plug into? Oh, I can see plugs into here, I hope you can see my finger wobbling there, which is the acquisition board. This board, long board here, well that looks like a bright so-and-so to get off. It's like, oh Jesus Christ, it's got to come out there because, oh, has it? you see, 
with big complex beasties like this it's easy to jump to conclusion it's like that amplifier you know you pull off one wire and you think okay well that's such and such and then if you're not careful you can jump to conclusions so, I mean that's a lot of work to pull that board out with the locks on it oh Christ almighty pulling out the power supply we've got trying to disconnect the mains cable we've got so I managed to pull these leads here mark them one two three four starting from the top going down there's two of the leads here look like high voltage maybe uh, white and red sorry white with a red stripe white with a brown stripe and they go into here and as you can see J12 blah 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 somebody's been in before us one other thing I noticed there's four screws holding this power supply in one of the screws were missing Yeah, look, only three screws. So somebody's been in before, tried probably trying to trace the fault. Pulling the power supply doesn't really get us any further forward, or does it? Well, I'm trying to go with this one angled. It looks like we can test the power supply and regulator with it out if we just connect the mains it's a lot easier to access so I take back what I said earlier on about it being a sod to get to it um, this sort of um, design lets us get in there and obviously in daylight you can see a lot better what the hell is going off right so the only way to all that's holding it in now all that's holding it in now is this earth mains earth I can't see there's a way to get in there well if I had the right socket I might be able to get in the only other way is just to unsolder this earth wire so I'm, I really doubt if I've got a socket that will fit but I'll have a look well I've sort of got a socket wrench as they call them in America that might go in this is the wrong socket this is a 9.32 but okay so if I do get in there and find the right socket and what have you that there is going to be an absolute pig to try and get back on so I'm just going to unsolder it sod the uh, mucking about uh, while I had it on the bench I thought I'd do a bit of continuity testing and I found a short between this base and this collector on this dual package transistor however when you switch to ohms you get a reading of 82 ohms follow it down and look what we've got here 82 ohm resistor so that's all right I thought right well these are going to be an absolute pig if I've got to unsolder them if there is one of these wrong but actually they come in little sockets isn't that great these don't or do they yeah they do they're all in sockets far out that makes testing things easier right I'll continue on so where are we tested the power supply tested all the transistors on a 15 volt plus 15 volt regulator they're all good so I'm now in the process of removing this board here, not sure what it is. There's three screws, one, two and another one at the top. You don't need to remove the screws all the way because they're sort of captive. And then it just sort of seems to lever out. The only other connection to that board is this white and orange striped wire here. Right, so I'll remove that and then check to see if the short is still there. So what I do is I dismantle it. I'll check for shorts as I go. Check for shorts. J12 
check to see if the shot was still there. It is. So now I'm pulling this plug off try, prior to see about removing this big board here. So that's how that goes on with the connection, with the brass connections facing me. This board I don't think needs to come out. So what, it, what there is, there are loads of plugs going into this board so it's like a distribution board. And then on the other side there's these, I think they're called acquisition boards. I'm going to take each one of those off, see if the short remains after each one and then if it does then I don't know. We'll just keep going, nice and steady. Green white stripe wire on the bottom, yellow white stripe on the top. Two captive screws holding it on. And then that looks like that gently lever off. I shall do that with two hands. Well, this is interesting. Each time I remove the board, I checked for the short across. This ground pin here, which is the first pin, one, two, three, four, and the fourth pin, which is the positive 15 volt input rail. I got a short when I took this one off after I took it off and then I took this board off here and the short went so I thought right well I'll put it back in short gone and I thought hold on and I put this board back in and the short's gone so I don't know what the hell is going off there one thing though, by taking these boards out, I live decidedly odd. Keep an eye on that read out of that meter. <laughs> so me dismantling and all that, we've got a 15 volt rail back. However, no change in intensity. I don't think these are going to work because there's no plugins. So, we've got to have a look if we've got 15 volts over there on the intensity pot. That is weird, but I'm glad that I didn't start pulling bloody components off that board and messing about. That would have been, you know, just causing more damage. So let's pop a uh, plug in and see if we get our intensity back. Well, I'm going to spin it round and see if the intensity has got 15 volts on the pot. With the time base plug-in in, we get change of intensity. I checked that it was 15 volts on the intensity control and there was. Okay, so we're making progress. The readout is still iffy, although you can sort of read it. Hold on, what am I doing? And I've sort of reversed things a bit because you used to have to pull this out to turn it on. Now you push it in to turn it on. Small detail, I've probably just got some wires crossed somewhere. The other thing is we've got no illumination on this plug-in. I think these things here should be illuminated. Although that's illuminated though, you see. So we have got illumination, so maybe it's just this uh, plug-in. I'm going to go and pop the other plug-ins, the vertical ones at least, and see what happens then. Okay, right, well we're getting somewhere then. All is not doom and gloom. I've got a square wave displayed, although it's jumping about a little bit. And you can sort of see our display. So there's two 500 microseconds, is that right? No, we're on five milliseconds. Okay, right, so we're not completely out of the woods yet, but we're not too bad. Right, let's try it on channel two. Okay, let's add. Okay, we've 
can't find our uh, channel 2. Have I got it on the right thing? Uh, uh, there we go, it's sort of dancing about a bit. Right, okay. Right, there it is. And then when we, ah, uh, okay. There. So, channel two, that's not brilliant, is it? Trigger source position. Okay, it's not that. Okay, right. Right, okay, well, this is better than what it was. We were still, like, not out the woods, but we're getting there. I think before I do anything else, I'm going to give these uh, plugins a good clean and clean the switches. Well, after all that work, it, uh, I turned it on earlier on and it's playing up. I don't know quite what it's up to. Still learning to drive the bloody thing. We've got some sort of weirdness. The the old CRT I don't think is right. It's not displaying right. I've messed about with it. And we've got intensity, if you can see there, that's changing. Earlier on I checked it and the 15 volt, plus 15 volt rail had gone. So I'm going to turn that off. There's still something not right there. I've cleaned both the... Um, what do you call I can't think what they're called. These cards here where they and the interface with the acquisition unit on the scope on the uh, on these these two plugins here and at the moment I'm just working on this one because on one of the range switches we've got this big pot here has come loose. It looks like it's come unstuck, mainly it could be from when it uh, was sent through the post, it was Hermes did it, uh, but I mean all modern couriers, all couriers are about the same, so even though it was really well packed, it, this sometimes happens, it can't be helped. So I've got a couple of resistors to, what well, is a wire and a resistor to unsolder there, and then this should come back and I should be able to see how it's attached. It looks like it's glued. Uh, we're all out of uh, strong glue at the moment so that could be problematic. But more than anything this needs uh, sorting out. There's something still not right. I'm wondering if the CRT is actually a bit tired. And the other thing is the EHT voltages aren't as simple as on these 500 series scopes where, how, where you have basically a linear supply to got about 500 volts the supplies are linear then you've got to run an inverter to give you your minus 1000 whatever for the cathode and plus 8500 volts for the anode on these however these have got automatic compensating circuits which makes fault finding the power supply the EHT that's the sorry the CRT and EHT power supply more tricky more complex so I think this this scope is gonna uh, take quite a bit more fault finding well, that's all for now thanks very much for watching take care of yourself so that for now